Hello again. Today's video is all about my antenna tracker and how to set up your antenna tracker using Eagle Eyes and the Eagle Tree software. I have been flying with Eagle Tree on screen display in all my FPV planes for some time now. So naturally, I decided on the Eagle Eyes FPV ground station as the heart for my antenna tracker. The next item I required was a stable platform that could pan, tilt, and support some weight. I fancied I could build something when I came across this item from readymaderc.com. I'll place a link in the description below. This unit came in a kit form, very easy to assemble, and included servos and all necessary hardware. Once the assembly was complete, it was just a matter of adding the various different components to the antenna tracker. This included the Eagle Eyes FPB ground station, two 5.8 gigahertz receivers, one Spironet antenna, one helical antenna with 12 dBi gain, a video recorder, a battery to power the Eagle Eyes ground station, and a battery to power the goggles along with the DVR. And here we see the tracker assembled and operational. I should point out at this time that the cable running down the right hand side of the tracker has two purposes. One, it supports the video feed for my video goggles and the other is to supply power to the two receivers. The two receivers are powered by three cell lipos that are mounted to the tripod legs with Velcro. The third tripod leg supports the VCR remote control. So there we have it, a quick look at my Eagle Tree antenna tracker. The remainder of this video will demonstrate how to set up your antenna tracker using Eagle Eyes and the Eagle Tree data recording software. At this point, we'll assume that you have some type of antenna tracker. May it be one like mine that I purchased from ReadyMade RC or one that you've made yourself. We'll assume that the tracker can pan right and left and can tilt 0 to 90 degrees and that you have an FPV aircraft with camera, video transmitter, Eagle Tree, OSD Pro, data logger, and GPS installed. The first thing to do is to set up your Eagle Tree FPV ground station by installing your pan servo connection, your tilt servo connection, noting that the ground is closest to the board. Next, connect your video receiver to the Eagle Eyes video in receptacle. This is required as the telemetry signal Eagle Eyes uses to track the aircraft is carried piggyback on the video signal. Eagle Eyes has two audio video input receptacles and a diversity feature that allows you to hook two different receivers to the ground station. Eagle Eyes will then decide which signal is best and switch back and forth accordingly. The diversity settings can be controlled by the on-screen display menu or by two buttons located at the top of the unit. And finally, to complete the ground station setup, connect your video viewing device, may it be a monitor or a set of goggles, to one of the four video out receptacles. Now you can start to calibrate your tracker. To do this, I highly recommend that you take the time to make a compass rose. This is basically a disc cut from cardboard or foam board with the face of a compass drawn on it. The compass rose is then put around the tracker base so that the zero degrees north corresponds to the center point of the pan servo. This way it's very easy to see the exact direction the tracker is pointing during calibration. It is important that when making the compass rows that the center point where all four compass points meet is also the center point of the antenna tracker. And here we see the compass rows attached to the antenna tracker with the pan servo in the center position. Use a compass to align your tracker with zero degrees north. 
open the Eagle Tree data logging software and connect your plane's OSD Pro to your computer. In the Data Logger software menu, under Hardware, click on Choose Parameters to Display on Video OSD. This opens a window that allows you to control what you see on your on-screen display. At the bottom of this page, click on Configure Eagle Eyes Tracker, and that opens the Tracker Calibration page. Once the calibration page is open, you'll see a checkbox that says, My servos rotate further than normal. In my case, I've checked this box, as the servos that came with my tracker rotate to 180 degrees. Beside that, there is a pan and tilt speed control with a drop-down box beside each. You can there set the speed that you wish to pan and tilt. Below that is where the main calibration takes place. This is where we can choose a pan angle to calibrate. Over on this side we have a drop down box and here we can choose the angle, for instance here north, that we wish to calibrate. Down below we have a variety of adjustments that can be made. Pan 10% less, pan 10% more, pan 1% less, 1% more, or even down to 0.1% less or more. On this side we have the return the pan to the center position. By clicking this we return our servo to its center position and uh, we'll do that right now and by doing that we see that the servo is slightly off the center position and we'll need some adjustment. So we'll go back to the software try a less 1% adjustment to bring the tracker back in line with zero degrees north. Here is another example of the adjustment button in action. You can see that clicking on the 10% button advances the tracker considerably. Now we've learned how to make adjustments to line the tracker up with a compass heading, let's calibrate the tracker. First we need to choose an angle to calibrate, let's say north. Then make a plus or minus adjustment necessary to line your tracker up with the north heading on your compass rows. When you're satisfied it's pointing to the north, click the button that reads. Click here when you have finished panning to the select angle. Once that's complete, choose another angle to calibrate, and so on until you have calibrated all four compass angles. And here, as you can see, we've got no alterations to make here. We click finalize. Up we go. Choose another angle, let's say south. And it goes to south. We can see that lines up nicely. So we don't have to do any adjustments. We just click finalize. Back to the menu. And now let's go for what west. So click on west. And away it goes all the way around to west. And again, it lines up nicely. So we can finalize back to north and fine. So now we can finalize again and at this point we finalize all pan angles. And that's important at the bottom of the page to click that finalize all pan angles to finish up with that. Now we can calibrate our tilt angles. And to do that we scroll to the bottom of the page where we find our tilt angle calibration menu. This menu is similar to the menu above, although you only have two positions to calibrate, the highest and the lowest. By clicking on the drop-down box, you can choose the angle to calibrate. Below that, you'll see a box that allows you to type in the number of degrees you wish to obtain for that setting, usually 0 for the lowest and 90 for the highest. Here I've chosen 90, as I want my antenna pointing directly up at the highest position. The remainder of this menu is like the one above with the ability to make minor alterations or to return the servo to its center position. And don't forget to click on the finish button when you've finished your calibration. So here we go again, the lowest position, 
make any alterations we need to click on the select button to complete the calibration you can then click on OK to close the window another feature we should mention here is the uh, test your tracker uh, you're able to use the drop down menu here to set a position to have your tracker scan to so you push go it goes to that position here say we set the highest position push go and the tracker would go to there or it also has the ability to do a sweep where the tracker continuously sweeps uh, there's also reset uh, all settings and again OK by clicking OK you close the Eagle Eyes configuration window and back to the, your configure OSD settings window now it's very important here that you click OK as that loads the OSD with the new configured information. And I guess that concludes this video and I hope it's useful to someone who's setting up an Eagle Eyes antenna tracker and uh, I hope you enjoyed it as much as I enjoyed making it.